Okay, um, I have no idea who's going to be watching this, who's going to be editing this. Um, my original intentions were to create a video, uh, more of a tutorial video on, on using Premiere Pro for baseball specific content and how to get like the most out of it in terms of uh, you know whether you're just creating content for social media or you're creating content for yourself so on and so forth. So we'll talk about uh, just some super basic, simple things, like literally from the starting point in which you open Premiere to how I guess I would say I create my, my style of content. Obviously, Premiere is an absolute beast. There's so many things that you can do within the app um, or within the software, and it gets super overwhelming at times. And I know when I first started with Premiere, I was coming from iMovie, and uh, iMovie was super simplistic, right? And very basic, but yet like it worked and it's hard to get away from certain systems. I know a lot of people like use CapCut, use their phone. And, um, and I know it's, it's tough sometimes to get away from like that comfort spot within the system you have, but I do want to encourage you guys because Premiere along with DaVinci, along with Final Cut, you know, these softwares, like there's so much you can do. And I'll be completely honest, I'm not an expert by any means. I'm learning things with Premiere, like consistently, day in and day out, I'm, I'm learning something new. And uh, so what I do, just a little simple hack for you guys, is I have a shared, I have a shared folder on Instagram with Harmless. And anytime we hit, we get hit with like something about Premiere, like a new update or like a, a new shortcut that they do or, or whatever the case may be like we just save it and add it to our collections so then when someone adds it like the other person can then see it and check it out so we're constantly learning there's always that fine line of you know making sure that you're you're delegating time separating like time for editing that even if it's just the most simplistic editing and then the time that you use to grow in your editing skills, right? Like that's something that I freaking really struggle with. Um, but here it is, we're going to open up Premiere. Basically, we're going to talk about like the simplistic edits, changing your sequence settings, making sure that like the uh, the frame rate is, is, is matching the video that you're putting into it, how to put a video into it, the programs, the workspace, all that stuff. By no means do I encourage people like to use exactly the workspace that I use. I just want to kind of show off, show off how this works. So I have an Adobe layout 2024 workspace or not workspace. It's a program and uh, let's open. Yeah, let's get there. And I like, I like my project. That's what I was trying to say. It's a project. That's another thing you'll learn about Premiere dude is there's uh, all these names and you're like, what does it mean? What is it, you know? And everyone's workspace is gonna be a little bit different, right? So you can click workspace and I have a few workspaces saved. So it's like, if I'm working for a landscape workspace for a YouTube video, it's this one. If I'm working for a vor vertical orientation, it's this one, right? So the video will be more vertically, uh, which will help me because when you're doing a vertical video on landscape, the workspace on landscape, it, it gets tough to see sometimes. And then uh, I have a keyframe workspace and we'll dive into that a little bit later, but the keyframes are gonna be right here and you want a good amount of space to operate within your keyframes, all right? So I have some, some presets already saved within my project, within the Adobe project. So what I'll do is I'll have my Adobe project open and I'll save it with no video files in there because if there's a video file in there and you go to open it up and it can't find that video file of where you last put it, it'll give you like a little pop-up thing and you gotta locate it or hit offline. And it's just better to have no video files in here as it is. Basically what I have is um, a bunch of text that I use for, for my videos. So I don't have to go in and change and, and modify the text every time I do a video. I have an adjustment layer. We won't even really get into that, honestly. I, that's more of an advanced thing, like a, not a huge necessity for, for editing baseball content. Auto captioning presets. This is something that I guess could be important if you're creating content for baseball. You wanna use captions, especially at stadiums when there's a lot of music or a lot of background noise. I like to have this auto caption preset because it's basically just the exact text that I want and the exact spacing and, and character um, 
quantities and all that. So text. And then I have two uh, sequence saved. So one's a 4K and it's shot. I, I shoot all my stuff very, very similar, whether it be my Sony camera, my, my GH6 camera, even an iPhone. Basically, um, always shooting 4K, so it's 3840 by 2160 aspect ratio, and always at, at you know 60 frames per second. And then the other one's gonna be a 4K 9 by 16, so I can always like open this up, so I double click it. Obviously, there's no video file in there. I go to this Johnny here, 12.5, so that was yesterday, um, and say I wanna hammer this Sony, let's go long toss with harms i'll throw the long toss into the adobe premiere uh, the, the adobe layout project let's just go ahead and throw everything in there so i got a kineon deal i got a full catch play and bullpen i got a harms bullpen pitch logic screen record i gotta do that right now um and then i got some slow mo so i gotta get i gotta get to those later for heck <laughs> Uh, so, all right, that's all good. Move that back up there. And now everything's in the project, right? And sometimes you'll see a thing up here loading. It's loading the, the transcript. That's a new update by Premiere. So 4K is there. Now I can take one of these Johnnies and drag them to that. Boom, opened up. And now I'm still on what works with this keyframe. So go back to landscape and you can see how that kind of kind of works. And I, and I would make my screen a little bit bigger. Is that the brightness? level am i just far away from my computer screen it's always so tough throwing here uh, in puerto rico because we got that big shadow um and then we got light so it's just a tough dynamic so it's gonna it's gonna open up the program in whatever matches the settings you have on these presets here and we can talk about those in a little bit, but say you don't even have that 4K thing in there, right? And you were just to grab a video file and you were just gonna move it over into the timeline, it would create its own project or program. Sorry, I get those mixed up. So this is a program um, and then these are, this is a project. So it would create its own. I'm super OCD about like the names that I use and making sure the titles are always right. So you can see the difference like that icon right there is going to be a video file. That icon is going to be um, a, a sequence. So, or I did it again, a program and I'm super OCD with the titling of it. So I go boom, double click, rename this. So I'll go 12 dash five um, catch play. Boom and see how it changes it down here too. So now I'm working in the same aspect ratios, the same frame rate as the video came, right? Now, if I wanted to change that, I have shortcuts on my keyboard, so I would just hit S and it would come up with sequence settings. Or you can go to sequence. Um, I guess you can't see that part, but I'm in the, at the top, obviously, of the, the file bar, file, what is it called? <laughs> and there's a button that says sequence, you click sequence, go to sequence settings, and this would pop up. Now, if you were to import a video, okay, so if you were to import this video like how we did, so let's close this, and say we had this 4K already saved, right? So we open up that 4K, and then I were to put a non 4k video in there so this one right here would be yeah it's fernander so we'll go raw sony rx 100 120 fps fernander this is how ocd i am with titling all right so we go boom throw that in there now this is a 4k sequence right it's a 4k program but this video file that I threw in there is actually 120 FPS shot on a different camera. We go to boom, throw that in there, and it's gonna say it's not gonna match the sequence settings of that. And I would always say, like, depending on what your goal of editing is, you know, whether it keep keep the existing settings or change the sequence settings, it'll do it for you. So watch. Boom, change the sequence settings, check the sequence settings again. So now they match that particular video file. All right, so that's a really cool thing about Premiere too. But say I want to take this video, okay, and I want to change it to a more vertical, like uh, an IG reel or a TikTok, back to sequence settings, 
and then you would just change the frame size. And you'll have to get good with like the remembering of what aspect ratios match what ratio on like a social media. So since the video is a 1080, we go 1080 by 1920, that's gonna be a nine, nine by 16. Boom, yep. Now we're in a nine by 16 and the video won't change from the scale that it's originally at, right? So it's gonna do the, the square like this. And to be honest, like we can, I know I'm gonna be jumping around a lot, but uh, I can keep it, right? Like a lot of people will keep that square. So it's a one by one in a nine by 16. A lot of people will keep that. Now let's talk about how we can get that blurred background that you'll see a lot on my content. So how I do it most simply is I'll take the whole video. And so this is like a, a bullpen obviously, right? So I wanna make sure that I edit the video first. Okay, so don't, don't do what I'm about to do before you edit it because then it'll get tricky when you're doing the quick short, shortcut edits. So the quick shortcut edits for me, again, this is something you'll have to maybe go change in your keyboard uh, settings, um, but you're gonna wanna cut. So the cut tool is here, or you can just hit C, right? So I hit V that goes back to the pointer, C, and it'll, it'll show you too when you hover the mouse over it. And all these tools are, are super freaking intuitive for um, you know simplicity's sake. I love using keyboard shortcuts. So we go up here and there's an actual separate thing for keyboard shortcuts. And just go on YouTube and type in like how to adjust keyboard shortcuts on Premiere Pro because this has been a game changer for me. I have my own custom preset and it just helps me like know that, okay, if I wanna cut it, I don't have to hit C and then hit boom, boom and highlight, you know? I can just hit, um, so if I'm my cursor here, I literally just hit Command K, it clips it. I hit up on the D-pad, right? So that goes back to this original file that we are not using, We're, we wanna trim that out. And then it, what's called a ripple delete is when, so if this is a regular delete, boom. See how it leaves that space? But the, we wanna make sure that that starts in the timeline, in the beginning of the timeline. So instead of like, that and then having to click that empty space and hit delete and then it goes what we can do right so if we make that cut let's go back again so i want to make this cut right here because he's about to throw it zoom up a little bit we'll make that cut right here i use command k and then i hit up on the d-pad that brings it to this beginning point and i do a ripple delete which is my shortcut for op for option delete and then it boom right there boom locked and then from when he catches the ball do it again command k and then you can scroll or scrub until he's about to do that same thing again right so this is how i make really quick cuts when we're doing baseball content and it's really nice too to have you know no mu music being played in the background or whatever because you can actually see you know if we zoom in like those those loud little dbs that come up that gives you a pretty good idea like oh that was the pitch right so then you kind of go Okay, like I'm gonna go right before that. Man K, back, ripple delete, boom, bah. Do it again. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, again, I know it's, it's gonna be tricky at first if you're just starting out and it's gonna be completely overwhelming. Please, please make sure you go to YouTube and just type in anything you wanna know. YouTube, like the tutorials for Premiere on YouTube are freaking amazing. Like I've learned literally everything about content creation, content editing, podcasting, podcast editing, audio editing, freaking um, using SSDs, um, using freaking, you know, equipment, <laughs> you know, a certain way for it to sound and look a certain way. You know, I've learned all of that literally through just YouTube and there's so many really cool tutorial whoa tutorials out there i'm getting so cotton mouth tutorials out there that's like very simple just like right to the point and there's so many things but um so that's how i do it right there like a like a quick cut same thing right so he's about to throw it lifts his hands boom yeah another one and then what's another cool thing, so like this video file shot at 120 FPS, you can even do it with, uh, with a 60 FPS, but you can slow it down a little bit. D on the, on the keyboard, for me, is gonna highlight whatever video file's in front of it. So you see the cursor, and I love to use the arrow keys on the, on the keyboard. That's why I actually prefer using like a, a, a laptop to edit, because it's all like kind of right here. 
right? So I can move that whatever video file is there. And then say I want to slow that down, right? Or say I want to have a fast version of that pitch, but I also want a slow version of that pitch. So again, this is another keyboard shortcut, but basically you're going to want to copy and paste that particular file there. Not, not full file, but that little clip there. So you want to highlight it, hit D, and then Command C is going to be your copy, or you can obviously right click it, hit copy. So I'm going to hit Command C, copy it, and then it's in that timeline. So it's going to copy that particular clip wherever it is on that timeline. So if it's here, it's going to copy it, you know, there. So if I were to like go to the next track here and I went to paste that, it would just paste it over that other clip. So we don't want to do that. So undo that command Z and then make sure you copy that again here. And then we can use a, and that's this tool. Basically it's going to take all these highlighted things and we're going to move them over and the clip, you know, the clip's probably like a second long. So you can see on the time timestamp, how long it gives you move it over. Just give yourself enough space, hit V and then boom, paste. Now you have that same clip. So these two are the same, but you just pasted it. Now we can hit command R and this is going to be the speed duration or you can hit R and it's going to turn this tool, which is the stretch tool. And you can go, we well, we and stretch it out. Now that's different than if we were to not have R or this ripple tool highlighted, say we were just have the, the cursor one highlighted and we were to do that. That's not going to slow it down. That's just going to increase the clip length, right? So remember that for the difference, one's going to increase the clip length. One's going to increase the actual, clip and the speed of it, right? I like to use command R because it gives us this ripple edit here. And that's basically going to change the things in front of your timeline. So you don't run into the problems of like making a slow-mo and then it hits another track. Like it would hit this one and then, and screw that one up. So you go at ripple. And then if you're shooting at 120, I can go all the way down to what I found is like 18% and it's going to look pretty smooth, right? So see how that looks pretty smooth. There's no real hiccup. 60 frames, you're going to probably want to do it like a 40 percenter. Um, and then 24, 30 frames, you know, probably not going to want to be able to slow that down. OK, um, so that's slow mo. See, the ripple will actually then change that. Um, so I got to run. But last thing, let's take a slow mo and let's do an overlay. All right, so this was the first pitch, bop. That was the splitter. That was the slow-mo splitter, bop. So let's go splitter fastball. And what you can do is that was the splitter here, this highlighted one. That's the splitter in slow-mo. That's a different one. So I want to go ahead and move those over. This is the heater here. So I actually want to do the same thing I did with the splitter, move these over copy and paste that particular file. So we just copied and pasted that. So we copied it and then pasted it to the next one. And then we can take this one and change it to the same percentage on the clip speed duration as we have in that other splitter one. So we want to change that to 40%. Boom. And then what I do is I take the slow-mo and then I go right at ball release. Okay. So this is where we're going to have to change the actual like positioning and scaling of things because you can't see his, his hand uh, in this nine by 16. So move it over and you're literally just moving the position over. But when you're doing overlays, you got to make sure that the positions are the same. Okay. So I'm OCD with weird numbers. So we're going to change that to 250. All right. And so now you can see I'm going to hit the arrows, right? The, the D pad on the keyboard. And I basically want to get to the exact spot in which if I hit arrow to the right, the ball is out of his hand, right? So that's kind of how I know that in the future, like what clip I'm going to go to next when I'm doing these overlays, it's going to be the exact same. So whatever frame. And again, when you're shooting these videos and you're shooting in 60 frames per second, sometimes they're going to be a little bit mismatched. So you're going to have to grind a little bit. All right, so this particular frame right here is the last frame in which his fingers were on the ball. I'm going to boom, I'm going to cut that, right? So that's the same as going to this razor tool and just hitting boom, all right? 
and then I want to delete that. I'll leave this space open for now. And then I want to go to the splitter and I want to change. So remember, this one was moved over to the position of 250. This is where we can talk about copying and pasting attributes. So you basically want to highlight this again, command C, and it's the same thing as literally just copying. But you see how when I go into that file, there's an option to say paste attributes. Paste attributes and paste are two different things. Remember how we pasted, uh, we copy and pasted that same video file to make it a slow-mo? We wouldn't do that same thing to paste the attributes, right? So if we're copying the attributes and to paste them into this video file, I go option command V instead of just command V. Option command V is pasting the attributes and it'll give you an option to select which attributes you wanna paste. Now, if since this particular video, we just wanna make sure that the position and the scale are the exact same to do this overlay correctly. We just wanna make sure that our motion and time remapping, well, not, not even really um, the opacity because we're gonna change the opacity here in a little bit. I don't really mess with volume. Um, the, uh, the essential sounds, I leave all these off. It can kind of get too confusing, honestly, as, as things move forward. But now as I hit OK, you'll notice that that video shifted over, right? So I'll undo that to show you. Undo it. That was the original. Boom. Paste attributes. OK. See how it shifted it? So now we find that ball release. A little splitter. Boom. So this frame right here is the one we want. We want to delete that. Now, again, doing an overlay here. So now we know that both of these, these specific tracks or these clips start at the exact same time, right? When the fingers are leaving the baseball. Okay, and we can see that with the fastball here, see it with the splitter here. All right, now, so what we do, and this is something that you have a couple different options. This is something that I have found the, the best way to do this is getting rid of one of the tracks um, audio. And by doing that, I go to right click, unlink it, and it'll unlink from that audio track, right? So when you highlight the video track, it will not highlight the audio track with it because it's unlinked. So this video right here, it's linked. So as soon as you hit the video track, the audio track will get highlighted as well. So the reason I do this is because I can now take that sound and I can hit delete. So now we only have the video, right? So I'll move that up onto the, uh, in, the, in the timeline so we can move this guy over, put it right at the beginning. So you know that both of these file tracks start at the same time, right? With the fingers in relation to the baseball. So now you have a couple different options for your overlay, okay? So what I use is a blend mode of lighter color, right? And again, this is gonna be personal preference. Some people like lighten. I don't think it really makes a difference. Some people will do darken, but then if you do darken, you actually compromise the, the white baseball. But basically what it's doing is it's overlaying the track above the, the, the main track, right? So this, so basically you have the fastball here, you have the splitter here. I put the fastball up just because it was easier, but usually I leave the fastballs down as the foundation. You don't need to know that's a little bit too complicated. Okay, but remember, blend mode, I use anything that has something about light in it, okay, is a pretty good one for baseball overlays. So lighten, it's gonna give you this one, but you'll see it kind of compromises some of the, the catcher's face. The backdrop is really nice. You'll have the baseballs um, get blended in. Oh, that's pretty good right there though. Right. Okay. Um, soft or sorry, lighter color, very similar, same thing pretty much. You can go to screen, right? Some people will use that. Some people will use overlay. That kind of makes it a little too dark for me. I used to use overlay, but you can see how when the ball goes into that color right there in the backdrop, it'll basically just go away. And I don't like that. Some people will use soft light, but same thing happens to that other track. Right. Now the catcher looks a little bit better, um, but you're basically losing sight of that whole ball. All right. Hard light, it's going to be the exact opposite for the, the other ball. So what I use, like I said, I use lighten or I use lighter color. Some people will actually just keep it normal. Again, the video track on the top. Some people will keep it normal and then change the opacity to 50%. All right. So you get this. That's pretty good too. All right. Smooth, pretty good. So let's see, we'll do this. We'll highlight them both. 
So remember, we want to use this tool again to make the video a little longer so it doesn't just start at that point. It'll start at that point, right? So we'll highlight all that, copy it. Remember, we're copying and pasting. We're not pasting attributes yet. Boom, paste, same thing here, all right? So now we can tell basically which overlay looks a little bit better. Maybe everyone's perception is a little bit different, but I'll use lighter color on this one and I'll use just a 50% um, opacity with this one. 50% opacity is what guys will do on like a iPad or a, like CapCut. You can just change the opacity without changing the actual opacity blend mode, okay? So this, I'm gonna change the speed of this too so we can appreciate it a little bit more. So we're gonna change the speed to 25% and see how I had both tracks highlighted. Now it'll, it'll, it'll make the both of those tracks 25%, not just one of them. So highlight both tracks. Anytime you're doing overlay work, make sure you're highlighting both tracks because that's where it gets a little tricky. Um, so we'll highlight 25%, bada bing, bada boom, and then we can appreciate this. So that's 50% opacity. And this one's lighter color. And that's the reason why I like the lighter color one because it, it makes the balls, <laughs> makes the baseballs appear a little bit better. Now, if I wanted to add a freeze frame to this, so I add a lot of freeze frames to my overlays, basically what I do is I get to that point in time in which both fingers or what, both hands are at ball release, which is right there. But this one being that it's the, uh, the lighter color one, it'll kind of compromise the, the skin and the arm itself. Let's see if this one's a little bit better. So this one's not really that much better either. See how that changes in comparison to like that, right? Like that would look good. So let's say we're just gonna add a, a freeze frame to this, okay? So what I do is I go to the exact point in time in which he's at ball release and we wanna take that picture, shift E. So you wanna export this frame, say this is gonna be the splitter. And if you just hit this button, it'll just go right into this. So watch, you hit import into projects, splitter, format, JPEG, it's gonna go right to my desktop, so it'll shoot right up here. Okay, added to the project. Then you wanna go back down here, you wanna cut that to make room for your picture. You can change this in settings on how much time these, these freeze frames will stay in for. You can change it um, in the sense of like it automatically always, anytime you input a, a picture, a JPEG, it'll stay in for you know a second or two. Mine's set at, mine's usually set at like a, a second and change. So I wanna change it to basically like a second. You can see it down there. So boom, now we have that freeze frame. So the track, the video track there, boom, freeze frame, then go. Right. So again, let's do that for the fastball. What was that at? 184. And all I did here was looked at where this thing was was uh, positioned, and it looks at 184. You can highlight that, copy that, or we can just highlight the whole thing. Remember, and copy and paste attributes. So if I wanted to copy that and paste those attributes, motion, time mapping, boom. Okay. So it'll change this track now to 184, just like this one. Okay, so now that that one's changed, we wanna to get to that same point at ball release. I don't love that because it didn't really lock into the hand position there. We're gonna to have to ride it anyways. So the first one we did was a splitter. Now we're gonna do fastball, import it into the project. Boom, come back down to your timeline, split that, move that over just enough. Move the fastball in there. Remember, move it back just so it's not as long and then clear that free space and I'll move the tracks back over. So now you have these at full speed with a freeze, freeze frame. Boom, bah, boom, bah. Then you have your slows. So if you wanted to, I don't know how this would look, honestly, let's find out. Oh, I guess it wouldn't look good because this is position. I was going to say I was going to put both of those little JPEGs in the timeline 
and just overlay themselves, but I accidentally had a different position here. So these were 250 and the freeze frames were got it at what? 184, so it would look offset. Okay, so last thing, keyframes. Yeah, keyframes. Keyframes are sick, especially when you're doing content like this, right? So I usually get it either right before ball release or right at ball release. Um, this is gonna change, so we wanna actually just take a singular track. So let's take that, that fastball track. Actually, no, let's just do a separate one. That's not, we're gonna have to do a slow. Let's do a slow. It's gross. I did a fuzz in slow-mo, that's sick. Yeah, we can keyframe that, heck yeah. So this one shot at 240 frames per second. So it's gonna kind of screw everything up. <laughs> Let's say we get them here. Boom, ripple delete that. We're gonna change the scale back to 100 so it matches the other ones we were working with. And then say I wanna start, say I wanna start at this point, okay? And I wanna keyframe, which basically means the video is gonna move over when I tell it to move over, right? And this is where we can go into this keyframe landscape. So you wanna get it to the starting point, and then when you hit these toggle animation buttons, that's when it's saying, hey, let's get going. And feel free to go on YouTube and look at different tutorials for this, but uh, because I might not explain it as appropriately or as, as, as good <laughs> as, as professionals, but I wanna start it in the middle of this frame, obviously, because he's centered. We can even move it all over a little bit right here. And then I wanna go position, and even scale, so it's starting here. So it has two set keyframes, right? Starting at this point. So that's gonna be when the movie, when the, when the file itself starts to move. And we can shift, right? So that's really zoomed up, so let's zoom out a little bit. So as we shift into his throw and get into his release slot, I wanna not only move the positioning to get the ball and the hand at ball release, but I also want to zoom it in, right? So we'll go to freaking 200, yeah. And you can see right here, it's gonna be zoomed in, right? So now you have two points in that keyframe and that's what you're gonna need. So the starting point and the ending point, right? So it's basically telling you, hey, this is where we started, keyframes are active. Now, as the video file moves forward, this is where we're gonna end up, right? And so I'll do it where I end it and then a few frames goes by, then he gets the ball release, right? So it can be one flow before I go shift E, let's hit that freaking Volk Bop freeze frame there. Da da da, yaka da da. Whoop, boom. So now you have the keyframe right before he gets the ball release, gets the ball release, now you have the freeze frame. Now what you can do is you can take it from here and start a whole new set of keyframes. So you add it, add it, right? And now you're gonna take from that position, now when he throws it, basically what I do is I get to right before the catcher's about to catch it, I freaking go up to about 750, and the camera's gonna be blurry because it's shot in HFR, but you can see now that we have a starting point, we have an ending point, right? And it's right after a freeze frame too, so it'll go wee. Ah, end it, done. Yeah. You can even take that and go hump up, highlight that. Let's speed that up since it's a little bit too slow. So let's go 250, boom. Hey, you know what I'm saying? All right, I gotta go. <laughs> that was, that took, uh, I think I talked about a lot more than I, I thought I was gonna, but hopefully that helps. And again, just to reiterate, um, YouTube tutorials. But I forgot to say, so this is the Adobe Layout 2024. That's like my preset layout that I'll add to. It's important that for me, I wanna keep this project the same as it was before I inputted all of these files into it, right? So if I, hit, if I just hit save, 
it would save the Adobe Layout 2024, which I want as kind of like a blank template. It would save all of those video files in it. So that's not what I want, right? So I want to go Command Shift S. It's going to then save as. Basically, I like to work from my SSDs since they're pretty dang fast too. We'll go to that particular file in which we're working out of, create a new folder, Adobe. Now we can go save it as 12.5 um, content, <laughs> Indios content, because I did a catch play and slows for the guys. And then hit, um, and so what I do is a constant reminder of if I'm saving it to my desktop, so running from the Mac, sometimes when there's poor Wi Fi connection, uh, the Premiere program will actually take a hit. So I usually just, like I said, edit from my SSDs. But I got to remind myself that a particular Adobe, you know, template is whether it's being edited from an SSD or if it's edited from just my MacBook. So that's a reminder for me to know that it's at being edited on my SSDs. And I include I use these SanDisks because they they read write up to about 2,000 megabytes a second. And I'll include um, some associate Amazon links, so I get a little bit of little bit of change if you want to purchase one of those bad boys from my link. But I have, let's see. I don't know if you can see them, but I, I have five in my hand. I have two four terabytes, four two terabytes. I have a mini, the two, yeah. I love those things. But I just started shooting 10 bit video, so things are so freaking large. So yeah, there, save it. Now you, this will change. And now we can close this out and it'll be there forever. You know what I'm saying? All right. Hit me up. If you have any uh, deeper questions, if you want a little bit more deeper guidance, I'm actually gonna open up a consult uh, service for video editing or creating content for baseball. Um, just hit me up on my question platform until it's live, but therobbyroshow.com slash ask. I'll include, uh, well, I'll include a bunch of stuff in the description too if this video ends up ever going public. So be sure to check out the description. Much love, God bless. And shout out to Chavez Young. Great Britain, hooked it up. He went to the WBC for, for Great Britain. I know they got a lot of crap for the Times New Robin font. But much love, Xavi. Appreciate you, dude. Chavez, 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 electric. I'll include a clip of him right now into this video and show you how electric he is. <laughs> Enjoy that. See you, dudes.